This comparison also reminds us that subject matter is not the same thing as meaning. Subject matter is what you're depicting. Content is your meaning. It's what you're expressing. Subject matter obviously has an impact. We can use symbols or iconography that are going to help to communicate, but just as important is form. How I say it matters just as much as what I'm saying. To understand the relationship, we might think of it this way. Subject matter plus form equals content. What I am depicting plus how I say it equals what I am communicating. The woman from Willendorf is an abstraction. We can tell because it references something from the observable world, but it is also changing the form. In this case, we're exaggerating proportions. In some areas, we de-emphasize things. The face is pretty much non-existent. Those ankles could never support that body. The arms are tiny little things. Other parts of her body are proportionately large. Most of those have to do with female sexual characteristics related to reproduction. The breasts, which keep a baby alive. The belly protruding with its deep hole for the umbilicus. While the artist hasn't bothered to carve in a face at all, they have gotten specific and incised labia. All of these lead us to the general conclusion that this is in some way related to fertility or reproduction. Even then, we don't exactly know. We don't have an artist statement. It could have been a goddess figure, as it often is interpreted. Just as easily, it could have been something to help with childbirth, or maybe even to get pregnant. What we can tell, though, is that the content is in some way related to female anatomy and its impact on fertility. In this case, a naked lady means a certain kind of thing. In this case, a naked lady means something completely different. Matisse is almost de-emphasizing the sexual aspect of it. Here, nudity is a reference to an innocent state. Works like this created in the early 20th century were a reaction against industrialization, a visual plea to get back to a more natural state of affairs. It's still abstracted, but in this case, the abstraction is elongating forms and emphasizing rhythmic connection rather than reproduction. For our final project, we're going to steal an idea from Mondrian. As you can see in this series of trees over the course of several years, he got more and more abstract until we get to the point where it would be very easy to misidentify tree from 1913 as a non-objective painting. Mondrian did go on to create non-objective paintings. Composition with red, blue, and yellow from 1930 is a classic example. He never fully stopped investigating naturalism or abstraction, however, as we can see with Broadway Boogie Woogie. The title indicates to us that this is an abstraction. He's emphasizing the excitement and blinking lights of Broadway in New York City, where he moved to escape World War II. Theo van Doesburg was also part of the Distill movement and friends with Mondrian, and this composition is an example of what we are going to be doing. It is easy to misdiagnose this as a non-objective painting. The title indicates that it's a composition, but art history teaches us it's a cow. And if I know it's a cow, I can look for and find the important things we have the blue of the sky, the green of the grass, the red where the grass goes in, where the milk comes out, the part the mean people eat. We have a cow, but it's so highly abstracted, we might initially misdiagnose it as non-objective. This is a progressive abstraction, and that's the basic idea of our final project. You're going to choose a subject matter, anything you want. You're going to choose content. What would you like to express? And through form, we're going to make that content more clear. We're going to progressively abstract. You can start slightly abstract or more naturalistic, and you're going to modify a series of three images, getting more abstract each time, consciously thinking about how you can alter the form to more clearly communicate your content.